everybody. Ken Walker here from Killer Photoshop Techniques. And today I want to show you one of my favorite techniques for making selections using channels. And I'm going to try to make this tutorial as quick as possible, but we got a lot of ground to cover, okay? So here I've got a photo that I got from iStockphoto.com. It's got the nice wispy hair, right? And uh, the background's a little bland. I want to change it up, make it look a little bit more like a uh, nice studio shot. So I need to pull her off of this image, right? But hair, I mean, come on. How do you make selections in stuff like this, right? You're not going to grab that stuff. You know, the marquee tool, none of that. Well, check this out. I'm going to head over here to the channels panel. What you want to look for is a channel that has the most contrast between your foreground subject and your background. So here I'm clicking on red, clicking on green, clicking on blue, and it looks like blue in this particular case is going to give me the best contrast. So the hair is darker and the background is lighter. Now, very, very important in here. If you mess up one of these existing channels, your photo is messed up. So always make a copy, right? We're going to take that blue, we're going to click and drag it down to the new layer icon there. So now I've got a copy of the blue channel. All of my work is done here just to make a selection. I'm going to go up to image and down to apply image, one of the very few times that I ever use this option in Photoshop. And the secret is to make sure that the blending mode says overlay. By default, I think it goes to multiply. But we're looking for overlay because overlay takes your darks and it darkens them, and your lights, and it lightens them. So it makes dark things darker and light things lighter. And the apply image effect here that we're getting is kind of like taking two layers and just putting the top one into overlay mode. That's really all it is, but it happens to just the one layer. Let's click OK. And as you can see here, now the darks are darker and the lights are lighter. One nice thing about this is, though, you can go in there and you can do it again. So we do it again. Now in this case, I'm losing a whole lot of hair, but it just depends on how much you want to do it. That's really the thing. And also you can't adjust the opacity on it. So I might could try 50% and see. That looks like it does leave a little bit of hair there for me. So let's go ahead and go with that. And that looks pretty good. Now it's time to do the old Control L or Command L on the Mac to bring up the levels command here. I'm going to click the white eye drop and I'm just going to select in the background here to make sure that that is definitely turned white. Okay, solid white. Then we'll click the black and I'm going to find something that is a little bit kind of grayish and click on that. That remaps that color to black. So now everything that is grayish and you know darker is all solid black. Let's click OK. Now we're going to grab our brush tool. I'm going to hit D to go to the defaults and X to switch so that black is my foreground color. And I'm just going to paint in. Let's do right bracket here to make these a little bit larger, make the brush bigger. And we're just going to paint in some of the bigger chunks there. And then I'm going to show you a little trick. Watch this. For the brush, if you've got a situation where You've got some intermittent tones there, right? I've got black and I've got white. You can do the same thing with your brush. Throw it into overlay mode and watch this. It leaves the white alone almost. There's a little bit of tinge going on there, but it takes and just makes dark things darker and light things lighter. So I don't have to worry about, you know, bleeding over a little bit into the white. It's not going to affect it really. Okay, now let's uh, switch over to white here. Hit the X key. And I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And let's just make this even bigger. We got a little bit of gradient going on here. That looks pretty good. Now, one thing I like to do is because when you're working in black and white like this, a lot of times your eyes get kind of fixed. So hit control I to switch that around so that you get kind of a different perspective and things will show up that really weren't uh, so noticeable before. 
everywhere that is outside of you know the actual person you want to make sure that you got good black and white definition everything on the inside though it, it needs to be just nice and solid okay now we're gonna go ahead and go with that to make this a selection hold the control key down click on the thumbnail that loads that as a selection let's go ahead and turn the RGB composite back on go back to our layers here I'm gonna alt double click on the background and then I'm gonna go ahead and just click my new mask icon because I want to just turn that into a mask now look at this look at the selections of each little strand of hair that we got going on here I mean can you imagine how long it would take to do that by hand like I mean unimaginable uh, let's go over here to another graphic that I have I'm just gonna click and drag hover over the tab and then we'll just drop it right there it's a little bit small so control T to free transform that and then let's just move it down below our model here and look at that I mean all by itself just like that you can barely you know it looks completely fantastic right nice thing is though since we're doing this with a mask with CS4 and CS3 we've got the ability to make tweaks to that mask so now we can click a mask edge here and if the subject is lighter you know a black background is going to tell you better what you're actually doing but you can tweak if you need to uh, contract the mask a little bit I'm gonna turn this off I have noticed that a little bit I'll just reset all of these so that you can see the difference that it makes here is default obviously if if it was a lighter background that we were putting it on you wouldn't even have to do anything but because we pulled her off of a lighter background we get a little bit of fringing here so the way that we can deal with that we can pump up the radius a little bit that'll help we can also increase the contrast a little bit don't go overboard with that because it'll start to get rid of your strands of hair and if we want we can contract it a little bit again don't do too much because it'll make little strands of hair disappear that you actually did want there okay and there we go I think that looks absolutely fabulous if uh, you think that was a pretty neat trick then check out killerphotoshoptechniques.com where I got a whole bunch more in store for you I'm Kim Walker. Thanks for watching the video.